Live from New York City, it's the Cube covering IBM Data Science for All. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to uh, Data Science for All. It's a whole new game. Air IBM's event, two day event going on, six o'clock tonight, the big keynote presentation on ibmgo.com, so be sure to join uh, the festivities there. You can watch it live streamed, all that's happening. Right now, we're live here on theCUBE, along with Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls, and we are joined by John Thomas, who is a distinguished engineer and director at IBM. John, thank you for your time, good to see you. Uh, same here, John. Yeah, pleasure, Thank thanks for, for being with us here. Sure. Um, I know, you, in fact, you just wrote this morning uh, about machine learning, so that's obviously very near and dear to you. Let's talk first off about IBM. Sure. Not a new concept by any means. No. But what is new with regard to machine learning and your work? Yeah, that, well, that's a, that's a good question, John. So, uh, actually, I get that question a lot. You know, machine learning itself is not new. You know, companies have been doing it for decades, so exactly what is new, right? Um, so I, you know, this, I actually wrote this in a blog today, this morning. Um, it's really three different uh, things. Uh, I call them democratizing machine learning, operationalizing machine learning, and hybrid machine learning, right? Um, and we can talk through each of these if you, if you like. I mean, uh, but I would say uh, hybrid machine learning is probably uh, closest to my heart. Um, so let me explain what that is, because that sounds fancy, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we need another hybrid something, right? <laughs> no, but in reality what it is is, um, <clears throat> let data gravity decide where your data stays, um, and let your performance requirements, your SLAs requ uh, dictate where your machine learning models go, right? So what do I mean by that? You know, you might have sensitive data, um, customer data, you know, uh, which you want to keep on a certain platform, right? Instead of moving data off of that platform to do machine learning, bring machine learning to that platform. Whether that be the mainframe or uh, specialized appliances or um, you know, Hadoop clusters, you name it, right? Bring machine learning to where the data is, do the training, building of the model where that is, but then have complete flexibility in terms of where you deploy that model. Mm -hmm. So as an example, you might choose to uh, build and train your model on premises behind the firewall uh, using uh, very sensitive data. Mm -hmm. But the model that has been built, you may choose to deploy that into a cloud environment mm -hmm. because you have um, other applications that need to consume it. Mm -hmm. That flexibility is what I mean by hybrid. Mm -hmm. Another example is, you know, especially when you get into uh, some of the more complex machine learning, deep learning uh, domains, um, you need acceleration, and, and, and there is hardware that provides that acceleration, right? So for example, uh, GPUs provide acceleration. Well, you need to have the flexibility to train and build the models on hardware that provides that kind of acceleration, but then the model that has been built might go into uh, inside of a CICS mainframe transaction for sub-second scoring of a credit card transaction as to whether it's fraudulent or not, right? So this flexibility, off-prem, on-prem, different platforms, this is what I mean by hybrid. What is the technical enabler to allow that to happen? Is it just a m modern software architecture, microservices, yeah. containers, blah, blah, blah? Explain that. Yeah, that's, that's a good question, and, and it's, it's not, we're not, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, couple, a couple of different things. One is bringing native machine learning to these platforms themselves. So you need native machine learning on the mainframe, in the cloud, uh, in a Hadoop cluster environment, you know, in, a, in an appliance, right? So you need, you need the runtimes, the libraries, the frameworks running native on those platforms. And that is, it's not easy mm. to do that, you know? We've got machine learning running native on ZOS, not, not even Linux on Z, I mean, it's, it's native to ZOS on the mainframe. At right? the pr very primitive level you're talking about. Yeah. So you can get so the performance that you need. Yes, you, you, you have the runtime environments there, and then mm -hmm. what you need is a seamless experience across all of these platforms. You need ways to export models, repositories into which you can save models, the same APIs to save models into a different repository and then consume from there. So it's a bit of engineering that IBM is doing to, to enable this, right? Mm. Native capabilities on the platforms, the same APIs uh, to talk to the repositories and consume from the repositories. So the other piece of that architecture is, is you're talking a lot, of, a lot of tooling that's integrated and native. Yes. 
and the tooling, as you know, changes, I feel like daily. There's a new tool out there, yeah. and, and everybody gloms onto it, and so yeah, yeah. the architecture has to be able to absorb those. Yes. What is the enabler in there? Yeah, so uh, you're, you actually bring up a very good point. You know, there is a new language, a new framework every day, right? I mean, we, we all know that in the world of machine learning, Python and R and Scala, uh, frameworks like Spark and TensorFlow, these, these are, you know, they have tab they're table stakes now, you know? Yeah. You, you, you have to support all of these, scikit-learn, you name it, right? So obviously you need a way to support all these frameworks on the platforms that you want to enable, right? And then you need uh, an environment which lets you work with the tools of your choice. So you need an environment like a workbench which can allow you to work in the language, the framework that you, that you are most comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are doing with data science experience. I don't know if you have heard of this, but mm -hmm. data science experience is you know, our enterprise ML platform, right? Runs on, in, on the in the cloud, you know, on-prem, on x86 machines, you can have it on a Power AI box. You know, so um, the idea here is support for a variety of open languages, frameworks, um, enabled through a collaborative workbench kind of interface. And the decision to move whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, it's a function of many things, but yeah. let's talk about those. I yeah. mean, data a volume is one. I mean, yes. You can't just yes. move your business into the cloud. Yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's not going to work that well. I mean, it's a journey, yeah. It's too yeah, expensive, it's or, but, yeah. but, and then there's others. There's you know, governance edicts and security edicts. Not that the security in the cloud is any, any, any worse. It might just be yeah. different than what your yeah. organization requires, and the cloud supplier might not support that. Yeah. It's different clouds, yeah. it's, it's location, yeah. you know, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so, when you talked about the data saying being on trim, maybe training a model, mm -hmm. and yeah. then that model moving to the cloud. So obviously yeah. it's a lighter weight, you know, it's not Yeah, as yeah, yeah, not, you're not moving the entire data, right, right. right, right. But I'm, I have a you know, concern, I wonder if clients ask you about this, is okay, yeah. well, it's my data, yeah. my data I'm going to keep behind my firewall, yeah. but that data trained that model, yeah. and I'm really worried that that model is now my IP that's going to seep yeah. out in the industry. <laughs> yeah. What do you tell a client? Yeah, it's a fair point, point. You know, so you obviously, you know, just, you still need a, your security mechanisms, your access control mechanisms, your governance mechanisms, so you need governance whether you are on the, in, on the cloud or, or on-prem, um, and, um, your um, encryption mechanisms, your uh, version control mechanisms, your governance mechanisms all need to be in place, mm -hmm. regardless of where you deploy, right? And to your question of how do you decide where, it, where the model should go, uh, as I said earlier to John, um, you know, let data gravity, uh, SLAs, performance, security requirements dictate where the model should go. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, we're talking so much about concepts, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and theories that you have. Yeah. So let's get roll up our sleeves and get to the nitty gritty a little sure, bit sure. here and talk yeah, about yeah. what are people really doing out there? Oh you know, yeah, use, use cases. cases. Yeah, just give us an idea for some of the, the yeah, you know, kind of the latest and greatest that you're seeing. Lots of very interesting, interesting use cases out there. So actually, uh, uh, <clears throat> And part of what IBM calls the data science elite team, you know, we go out and engage with customers on very interesting use cases, right? Um, and we see a lot of these hybrid discussions happen as well. Um, you know, uh, uh, going from uh, one, one end of the spectrum is understanding customers better. So I call this um, reading the customer's mind. Mm -hmm. So can you understand what is in the customer's mind and make, uh, have an interaction with the client without asking a bunch of questions, right? So can you look at his historical data, his browsing behavior, his uh, uh, purchasing behavior, and have an offer that he will really love? Can you uh, really understand him and give him a celebrity experience? So that's what's one class of use cases, right? Another class of use cases is around improving operations, improving um, um, your own internal processes. So, so one example is fraud detection, right? I mean, that is, you know, um, a, a hot topic uh, these days. Um, so how do you, as the credit card is swiped, right? You know, it, it's just a few milliseconds before that travels through a network and hits your back end mainframe and uh, a scoring is done to, as to whether this, is, this should be approved or not. Well, you need to have a prediction of how likely this is to be fraudulent or not mm -hmm. in the span of that, of the transaction. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. <clears throat> Um, I don't know if you call um, help desks, you know, I sometimes call them hel helpless <laughs> desks, right? Yeah, help <laughs> desks. <laughs> Try not to helpless desks, but you know, for pretty much every enterprise that I am talking to, you know, there is, uh, there is a goal to optimize their help desk, their call center, mm -hmm. their call centers. 
um, and call center optimization is huge. So as the customer calls in, can you understand the intent of the customer? See, he may start off talking about something, but as the call progresses, the intent might change. Mm -hmm. Can you understand that? And in fact, not just understand, but predict it and intercept with something that the client will love before the conversation <laughs> takes a bad turn. Must be listening <laughs> on my calls. <laughs> your calls, yeah. We're oh, studying oh, your calls, I'm Don. Meander, I go every which way. I, I game the system and just get really mad and go, let me get you an operator. Right, right. Yeah, give me a supervisor, zero, right? Zero, give me a zero, supervisor, zero, right? Agents, okay. <laughs> you, you, you two guys, your data is special case. This, yeah, right. Right. This guy's pissed. We are red flag right <laughs> off the top. We're not even analyzing it. Dave, John, forget about it, you know. You know what about it, 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 things, because you know, they're moving so far out to the edge, and now you know, with mobile and, and yeah. that explosion there and yeah. sensor data being yeah. what it is, and all this, this tremendous growth, yeah. uh, tough to manage. It, it is, it and, really and is. I guess yeah. maybe tougher to make sense of it. So yeah. how are you helping people make sense yeah. of this so they can really yeah. filter through and find the oh, data yeah. I mean, this that is, matters? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different things rolled up into that question, right? So one is um, just managing those devices, those endpoints, you know, multiple thousands, tens of thousands, millions of these uh, devices, how do you manage them? then are you doing the processing of the data and applying ML and DL right at the edge, or are you bringing the data back behind the firewall or into the cloud and then processing it there? If you are doing um, image detection in a car, in a, in a, in a self-driving car, do you have the, can you allow the latency of data being shipped and of an image mm -hmm. of a pedestrian jumping in front to be shipped across the cloud for a deep learning network to process it and give you an answer, oh, that's a pedestrian. Yeah. You know, you may not have that yeah. latency, right. uh, uh, you know, so, so um, um, you may want to do some processing on the edge. So that is another interesting discussion, right? Um, and you need acceleration there as well. <clears throat> the another uh, aspect is, you know, as you said, separating the signal from the noise. You know, it's just really, really coming down to, in, in the different industries that w we go into, you know, what are the signals that we understand, you know? Can we build on them, and uh, can we um, can we reuse them? You know that is that is an interesting discussion as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, in, with the world of exploding data that we are in, with all these devices, it's very important to have a systematic approach to managing your data, cataloging it, the, um, understanding where to apply ML, where to apply acceleration, mm -hmm. governance. All of these things become I important. I want to ask you about. Come back to the use cases for yeah. a moment. Yeah. You talk about sort of celebrity experiences. I put that in sort of a marketing category. Fraud detection's always been one of the yeah. favorite big data yeah. use cases, yeah. help desks, recommendation yeah. engines, and yeah. so forth. Um, let's start with the fraud detection. Yeah. So about a year ago, yeah. I mean, first of all, fraud detection in the last six, seven years has yeah. just gone and been gotten immensely better. Yeah. No question, yeah. and it's great. Yeah. Um, however, yeah. The number of false positives about a year ago was just, it was too many. Yeah. We're a small company, but we buy a lot of equipment and lights and cameras yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The number of false positives that I personally get was overwhelming. Yeah. They've gone down dramatically yeah. in the last 12 months. Is yeah. that a, just a coincidence, <laughs> happenstance, or is it getting no, better? No, it's, it's, it's not that the bad guys have uh, gone down in number, it's not <laughs> yeah, that yeah. at all. No, no, that I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there is, um, there is a lot of sophistication in terms of the algorithm, algorithms that are available now in terms of um, try and, <clears throat> so if you have uh, tens of thousands of features that you're looking at, how do you collapse that space and how do you do that efficiently, right? There are uh, techniques that are evolving in terms of uh, handling that, that kind of information. Right. Um, in terms of the actual algorithms, uh, different types of neural net uh, innovations that are happening in that space. But the, I think perhaps the most important one is that things that used to take weeks or days to train and test now can be done in, in days or minutes, mm -hmm. right? The acceleration that comes from GPUs, for example, allows you to test out different algorithms, mm -hmm. different models, and say, okay, well, this is, this is a very, uh, this, this performs well enough for me to roll it out and try this out, right? And so mm -hmm. it gives you a very quick cycle of innovation. So the time uh, to value is exactly, really com compressed. Exactly, exactly. Okay, now let's take one that's not so good. Um, ad recommendations, mm -hmm. you know, the Google ads that pop up. Uh, you know, one in a hundred are maybe relevant, if that, mm -hmm. right? And they they pop up on the screen and they're an annoying. <laughs> I worry that Siri's <laughs> listening somehow. I you know, talk to <laughs> my wife about Israel, and next thing I know, I'm getting ads for going to Israel. <laughs> is that a coincidence? Are they listening? I mean, what's happening there? I don't know about what Google is doing. <laughs> I can't comment on that. But <laughs> I have no way. I don't want to comment on that. Maybe but just from a technology <laughs> you know, from perspective. A, from a technology perspective, um, 
this, this notion of understanding what is in the customer's mind and really getting to a customer segment of one, mm -hmm. that is, this is um, top interest for, for many, many um, organizations. Uh, regardless of which industry you are, in insurance or banking or retail, doesn't matter, right? And it all comes down to the fundamental principles, but how efficiently can you do? Now, can you identify the features that have the most predictive power? So this is, you know, um, a level of sophistication in terms of the feature engineering, in terms of, um, you know, collapsing that space of features that I just talked about. Um, and then, um, uh, how do I actually go through the data science of this? How, how do I do the exploratory analysis? How do I actually build and test my machine learning models quickly? Uh, do the tools allow me to be very productive about this? Uh, or do I spend weeks and weeks coding uh, in, in lower level uh, formats? Mm -hmm. Or do I get help? Do I get guided interfaces, visual builders, which guide me through the process, right? And then the, the, the topic of acceleration we talked about, right? Um, these things come together, and then couple that with cognitive APIs, so for example, speech to text, um, the word error rates have gone down dramatically now. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you talk on the phone, um, you know, there is a, we, at a, with a very high accuracy, we can understand what is being talked about, right? Mm -hmm. um, image recognition, the accuracy has gone up dramatically. Oh, yeah. You can create custom classifiers to, uh, for industry specific um, uh, topics that you want to identify in, in pictures. Um, <coughs> natural language processing, natural language understanding, all of these have evolved in the last few years, and all these come together. So machine learning is not an island. Now all these things coming together mm -hmm. is what makes these uh, dramatic advancements possible. Well, John, if you figured out anything about the past 20 minutes or so, is that Dave and I want ads delivered that matter, <laughs> and we want our help desk <laughs> questions answered right away. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can help us with that, <laughs> you're welcome back on theCUBE anytime, okay? We will try, John. That's all we want, that's, that's all we want. You ask. guys, your, your calls are still being screened. <laughs> <laughs> all right, John Thomas, thank you for joining us. We that's appreciate right. that. Uh, thank Our you. panel discussion coming up at four o'clock Eastern time, live here on theCUBE, we're in New York City. Be back in the bed. Uh -huh.